Okay, so for our next video I want to do is I want to basically start curating some data sets. Now, if I take a look at my Postgres database, I have a customers and an orders table. Okay, and if I take a look in my data lake, I'm going to see that here in this example folder that I have some shipping data for those orders. Okay, so I have the, and this is where Dremio shines, because what's the problem here? I have some of the data I need on my data lake stored as JSON, and then some of the data I need in that Postgres database. Without a system like Dremio that allows me to work with both of these in one place, I would have to like either copy that JSON file into the Postgres database or export the data from Postgres as JSON files, um, and then probably write some Python to kind of join them, and it gets a little bit more complicated. But here, I can simply say, hey, I want to treat this JSON file as a table, so I'll click Format File, make sure that it recognizes it correctly, which it looks like it does. Awesome. Okay, and then I am good to go. Okay, I can see that this JSON data has the information that I need, and we're good. Okay, I see that because JSON is a semi-structured kind of data, I can see that order number it looks is showing up as a number type, shipping address and shipping date are showing up as um, strings or text. So now I have that data set ready, I can begin sort of joining these data sets. So there's a couple different ways I can do this. First, I probably want to just take the order data and combine it with customers because right now, if I take a look at the order data from Postgres, it doesn't have the customer information. Okay, it tells me which customer it is via ID, but that doesn't help me. Now, you know, I'm comfortable with SQL, so I could write this join just fine. So if you're someone who's really, if you're a more technical user who's very comfortable with SQL, you could just write SQL, but Dremio tries to make things easy for users of all levels. So if you're someone who's not a SQL expert, well, Dremio's got your back and you can use this join button right here to help join the data sets. I can click join and I can say, hey, what is the data set that I would like to join with? In this case, I'd like to join it with the customer's data set right here. I click next and then I can say, hey, wherever the customer ID in my original table matches the customer ID of my target table, I want to join there. I can then apply the join and you see that it'll write the SQL for me. So now I can run this query and there I there I have it. Okay, now it's nice and joined. Now I can take a look at it, see if there's anything else I want to change. Uh, basically, probably going forward, I really don't need the, the, the two customer ID fields here. So what I can do is I can also click right here. I could click drop to drop the column. Okay, and basically now run that query and just confirm that that column has been dropped. Good. Okay, and then I might just save this or save this view so that way it's under a, a name that makes it easier to work with. So I'll just save it in my home space again and we'll call it, you know, we'll call it uh, customer orders. Okay, so there's that. Let me start closing some of these extra tabs. Okay, and then if I go back to my data set explorer, I can see that customer orders is now in my home space. And I can query it. And this is a result of me joining the Postgres, those two tables in Postgres. But now I'm gonna join that CSV file. So I can once again, click join, then grab that JSON file from my data lake. And I can say, hey, wherever the order in the original data set matches the order ID in the JSON file, well, I want you to join there. So, and again, I can specify what type of join right over here, so you got some flexibility. So I'm gonna hit apply. And then I'm gonna hit run and take a look and just make sure that everything looks good. And everything looks good, except there's two order ID fields, so I'm gonna get rid of one of those. And let's see here, let's drop. And then I can hit run the query and we're good to go. And you can see here that there's a lot of different tools that I can use to work with the data set. So if I can rename a column, drop a column, I can run group by aggregations, generate another calculated field. Basically, I'm going to generate a field that's like derived from another field um, and so forth. So 
you have a lot of flexibility of what you could do without extensive SQL knowledge. Okay, and then I can again save this view as save as view, and we'll just call this final shipping info. Okay. Awesome. Now just to show you one more example of just sort of like curating a data set, I'm going to go back to that weather data set from earlier. So I am going to go back to samples. Here is our weather data set. Okay, and now if I run the query, because this was a CSV file and CSV files are schemaless. Okay, so there's no way for necessarily a tool to kind of assume which fields are what type of data. So if you'll notice that all these fields are strings. Okay, so that means I'm gonna to need to do some prep work before this data set's really ready for me to use, mainly turning all these fields into uh, integers. Okay, and turning this into a date. So I can go field by field, convert data type. This one I wanna convert into a date. Okay, and then I can take a look at the preview of what the result looks like, and that looks good to me. And I can hit apply. And now I have a view that basically shows me the data the way I'd kind of like to see it. And then I can do that with um, the next field, convert data type, turn that into an integer. Okay. And just make sure that's looking the way I want, to, I want it to look. Okay, and yep, so far, well, nope, that doesn't quite look right. And that's because I converted it to an integer. So I'm gonna try that again because it should have been converted into a float, um, but I just kind of was premature there. So I'm gonna run this query again. Okay, turn this into a float type. Again, always a good thing to take a look at the preview, so make sure that the preview looks good. And we're good to go. Now, once you basically a lot of these fields are gonna be like the same type of uh, change. So what I can do is I can, instead of going convert data type every time, since I see that this is the, the syntax for converting, I can just kind of copy that over pretty quickly and do that for these others. So I can just say, okay, that's, and then just change this to PRCP, PRCP. And then I can do the same thing for snow. And then this editor should have, you know, all your typical shortcuts available to you. So I can do like multiple cursors. Okay, so I can just quickly edit that. And again, I did that by holding down the Alt key and then putting my insert in multiple places. Okay, and then here this was, uh, and I can, I can refer to down here. So that's, uh, forgot the whole Alt. SNWD temp min. Well, actually, it's temp max. And then one last one for temp min. Okay, that all looks good to me. And now keep in mind, there's a couple of features are here. Like I have, if I need to know what my keyboard shortcuts here, I can see this here. So for example, you'll see right there at the bottom, format query. So I can hit control shift F, okay? And see, it makes my query look a lot nicer, okay? So you can write your query and then you can prettyfy it by doing control shift F. I can, you know, run, uh, turn autocomplete on and off, but I can also do that through buttons here. I can turn on like dark mode and light mode. I can, uh, take a look up my all my SQL functions. So the UI is really built to make life easy, uh, easy whether you're a technical user or a less technical user. But I can now run this, and now I have this set up all the way, the way that I like it, okay, with all the right field types. And then I can go save this view. We'll call it like weather prep. Okay, because it's the weather data set, but now prepared where it can actually be useful for my purposes. 
and I'll save that. And hopefully that gives you a better idea of how you can use the Dremio UI to work with data sets, uh, join data sets, uh, whether you're a technical or a non-technical user with when it comes to SQL. I'll see you in the next video.